Hello! This was going to be a video taking a look at the impact of BIOS version 1.8.0 on the gaming performance of my Dell G5 SE, but just as I'd finished all of the testing, prepared all of the graphs, and started writing the script, Dell go ahead and drop BIOS version 1.9.0. How inconsiderate of them. So, instead, today we are going to be comparing both of these, 1.8.0 and 1.9.0, to the previous most popular versions, 1.3.0 and 1.4.4, and also the previous latest version, 1.7.0. As always, the laptop that I'll be using for the tests has the AMD Ryzen 5 4600H CPU, 32GB of DDR4 memory at 3200MHz, and an RX 5600M GPU. This video comes to you in the spirit of better late than never, and for that I can only apologise, but I do have a couple of excuses. First, my laptop broke and had to be RMA'd. The dedicated graphics completely disappeared, it went poof, and you couldn't see it in anything on the system. So games were using the integrated graphics, so the laptop was still working, but the dedicated graphics for all, all intents and purposes, was gone. Uh, so that took a few weeks. Second of all, well, I've been off doing some, you know, other general important stuff. Not to mention the delays caused by the untimely release of 1.9.0. Anyway, as to not delay you any further, let's get straight into the details. First up, we have CSGO which, as you can see, enjoyed the best performance on BIOS version 1.7.0 and 1.8.0, with the latest BIOS version 1.9.0 bringing it back down to a similar average FPS to the older BIOS versions instead. The 1% lows tell the same story. Not off to a great start then for the latest BIOS version, but it could be worse. Next up is GTA 5, and similarly to CSGO, a BIOS version 1.7.0 has a huge lead on the older BIOS versions. But, unlike with CSGO, version 1.8.0 scores the second worst average FPS, with 1.9.0 last by some margin. The 1% lows are fairly similar across all of the BIOS versions, with the exception of 1.9.0, coming again in dead last. Sticking with Rockstar Games now, Red Dead Redemption 2 saw both of the latest BIOS versions, 1.9.0 and 1.8.0, come last and second to last respectively, in terms of both average frame rates and 1% lows, with 1.3.0 being first in both average and 1% lows. For this game, no BIOS version, has come close to the performance of 1.3.0. Cyberpunk 2077 was the game that I found to have suffered the most significantly with the latest BIOS version. 1.9.0 took this game from playable to an unplayable stuttery mess as reflected by both the average and the 1% low figures being considerably behind all other BIOS versions. Other than 1.9.0, every other BIOS version achieved a quite similar average, with 1.8.0 edging out a small lead. The same can't be said for the 1% lows though, where 1.8.0 came second to last, suggesting that the older versions provided a smoother experience, but the 1% low wasn't as ridiculously low as seen with 1.9.0. The last game I tested was Rocket League. In this instance, 1.4.4 was the outlier in terms of average frame rate at 201.9 FPS. Its average FPS was nearly 28 higher than BIOS version 1.3.0, which came in second place. Once again, the latest BIOS version is last, and once again, 1.8.0 is second from last. The 1% lows fared better though, being similar across the board except for with 1.4.4, clearly in last place, despite achieving the highest average. Curiously, these results contradict the testing on my earlier video where I tested BIOS version 1.7.0 when it was the latest BIOS version. During that testing, I found 1.7.0 to sacrifice a lot of performance compared to the older versions, but now, 
1.7.0 achieved the best results in terms of both average and 1% lows. I can only speculate that other system updates must have matured for BIOS version 1.7.0, allowing it to achieve better performance than it was able to when it was new. 1.8.0 came a close second, achieving an average FPS, on average, 93.4% that of 1.7.0, and the 1% lows were 96.8% that of 1.7.0. Unfortunately, the latest BIOS version 1.9.0 woefully only achieved 72.5% the average FPS of 1.7.0 and 78% the 1% lows of 1.7.0. A significant hit to performance indeed, and by far the worst performer, at least for gaming. These results were so striking in fact that I re-ran the tests to confirm that they were correct and the results were consistent on the second run, so make of that what you will. I'm wondering how the performance of this laptop will be running Windows 11, so I will be covering that in my next video. Make sure that you hit the subscribe and the bell icon so that you don't miss that video. And with that, we have reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please hit the like button. On a somewhat unrelated note, I find this laptop to be quite unstable. That is, before and even after I RMA'd it. Now, it doesn't be sad every day, but it's often enough that I consider them to be frequent. In addition to this, the screen, again, even more so frequently flickers with bands of static across the screen is the only way I could describe it. I've always kind of assumed that this is poorly written drivers for one or more of the components, but I really don't know. The fact that it persists before and after the RMA, which I don't know what they did to repair the laptop, but I assume maybe they swapped the mainboard or, you know, maybe they reballed the GPU, but I, I don't know how, how they'd really approach it. But the fact that it didn't change suggests to me that it's probably a driver issue, but I could be wrong. So with that in mind, uh, if you have this laptop, let me know down in the comments section whether you have any stability issues, whether you get this banding on your screen or whether I should RMA it again while it's still under warranty. I've got until, I think, February maybe next year. So time is quickly running out. So please let me know. Interestingly, both of these issues only seem to happen when the laptop isn't under a heavy load. Like when I'm browsing the internet, writing these scripts or editing photos. When I'm gaming, it doesn't happen. It doesn't be sad. Not very often anyway, not, not as often as it does when it's Chungling along, not doing all, an awful lot. Anyway, uh, babbling on now. Uh, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.